Welcome to China Manufacturing Decoded from Sophieast, the podcast where we take you through some of the major topics facing importers and manufacturers in China today. Hello, and welcome along to China Manufacturing Decoded, episode sixty-six. Hi, Renault. You're joining me again. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good, very good. How about you? Yes, not too bad. Thanks.、Uh, we're both getting some good weather while you are、uh, in in、yes. Europe as well at the moment. Yes, enjoying the the nice weather away from the the, the crazy weather. You know, very hot and humid of of South China. Yeah, sure, I mean,、sure. you know what it's like. So yeah, yeah, enjoying all the good good food and、um, a change of air. Yeah. Yes,、uh, how how lucky! That's lovely, excellent. Okay, so today I wanted to look at an article that Dan Harris over on China Law Blog has written called "Mexico is the New China and Manufacturers Are Moving There." And I guess my question for you really is: Is Mexico a credible alternative for importers from China right now? For some of them, yes. So it's always it depends, right?、Mm-hmm. If you are developing new electronic products, time to market is important, and it's a little bit complex, and you know, it, and and at the same time you need to to get the lowest price on on the components. Mexico might not be the best place.、Mm-hmm. You might have to to do that in a in China, maybe maybe Taiwan with Chinese components. But on the other hand, if your main market is the United States and you need some relatively, I would say, simple and low tech, it's I'm a little bit harsh on Mexico here. I should not say that, but you know some of the, the manufacturing processes that are pretty common in Mexico.、Uh, so things like I don't know, you need to have some wooden boxes. You need you you you're gonna. You manage the supply chain. You make sure they get the right wood. They're gonna cut it.、Um, you know, put some veneer or paint or or anything. You know, and, and pack it and send it to you. You will find some、um, some some good manufacturing places.、Um, so, so some good workshops in in Mexico that can can do it.、Mm. And of course, the lead times to your main markets, the U.S., will be so much lower. Then、um, you know so much better than than shipping that from from China or Vietnam. Sure.、Um, so these are two sort of you know extreme examples. But, you yeah. Know, if if you're in San Diego and you can find the wood workshop in、uh, in Tijuana just on the other side, and you can go and have a look at what they're doing from time to time. I mean, it's <laughs> if if you get poor quality, you can just send it back on the truck. And it's it's going to be there in a few hours. It's another world, right? It does、yeah. come with a lot of benefits. Yes, and you just mentioned in the U.S. So I mean, when we talk about Mexico, the obvious market seems to be the U.S. Maybe Canada, I guess, as well. A lot of U.S. companies seem to be interested in moving either some or all of their manufacturing from. China to Mexico, indeed, other places、mm-hmm. as well. So, I mean, you've just mentioned the ease of access and 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 the proximity. Are there some things it, that are happening in China that are driving these companies out? Then, oh yes, oh yes. So there's a lot of interest, and that's why、um, then Harris over a China Law Blog wrote about that, and he wrote、yeah. a a follow up just、um, a couple of days ago, I think. Well, <laughs> what is pushing? Companies, especially American companies, to to look at locating their manufacturing out of China. I mean, it's、mm. you know we've discussed that before. Is、yeah. number one the political risk. So there's some tensions that have just kept rising.、Uh, people focus a lot on what Trump says or Biden says, but it's a lot about also what the Congress and the Senate do. And、um, and these people there really are are pushing an agenda to、uh, to decouple really to you know to get away from China to、uh, sometimes really to punish China for for various things. I'm not going to comment on that here. Sure.、Um, but 
Um, so this is the political risk, right? And then what happens if, you know, if, if they try to invade Taiwan and, and there's like military action, I mean, that, that could be disastrous for a company having manufacturing made in China for sale in the US, right? Okay, mm -hmm. political risk, obvious. And then supply chain risk. So nobody was really paying much attention to, to that uh, until 2020. But um, what happens when it's made in the country and you cannot go there to actually see how it's being made? You cannot even see the people who manage your productions. What happens when the price of a 40 foot container gets to 25,000 US dollars. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, sometimes the, the, the price of the container is, is higher than the value of the goods inside uh, for a lot of, I don't know, um, low value, you know, decoration items, Christmas ornaments and so on. Yeah. Uh, that, that's just nuts. Uh, and it's not just that. I mean, a lot of people cannot even ship. Uh, a lot of containers are, are, are kept at the terminal for, for you know, weeks and weeks sometimes because there, there's a booking and it's canceled and then there's another booking, it's canceled again and, and so on and mm. so forth. So a lot of people are looking at other places outside of China and really um, the political risk is pretty unique to China. Some people would put Vietnam into that also because it's, look, you know, if, if, if there's really a conflict is Vietnam going really to really going to side with, let's say maybe the, the U.S. against China, which is their neighbor? I mean that, that's um, you know that, that's a bit far fetched to me. So some people would put Vietnam um, in 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 the same bag, mm. uh, but then when it comes to supply chain risks, actually some people might argue it's it's even higher in places like Vietnam or India because of you know, the way they manage the epidemic. Um, nobody has any idea when things will be back to normal over there. Uh, and right now, if, if you have some productions in, in South Vietnam, you know, or in North, uh, in, or somewhere in Thailand, or mm. in some places in, in India, even though that got better, but it was really bad, uh, what, a couple of months back, right? Or three months back? Yes, yes. Um, you know, tough luck. The, 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 the factories might actually have to close. Yeah, absolutely. For, for a while. So, uh, yeah. So these are all the things that are really pushing people away from, from Southeast Asia, let's say, mm. and, and China. And Mexico looks like an obvious choice. There's a lot of manufacturing down there. Um, the, 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 you know, the workforce, the, the wages are lower than in, in the US, much lower. Mm. And I think it's the BCG, right? That big strategy consulting firm. They have a, an index of the cost of manufacturing in general, you know, in different countries. Mm -hmm. And they say that Mexico is cheaper than China. It's been like that for, I don't know, maybe five years already. So, mm -hmm. of course, people are curious about Mexico. They, they want to see if they can get something going there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it seems to make sense. I, I'm quite surprised. When I started looking into Mexico in preparation for this episode, I was quite surprised to see how much manufacturing is taking place. And I mean, one of the big sectors is auto manufacturing that I, I was reading about. So it, it mm -hmm. sort of initially I was sort of surprised, but it seems like it's almost a hidden gem. So I'm sure there are some drawbacks as well because if it's if it's cheaper than China, then why isn't everybody manufacturing in Mexico? And we'll get on to that. One question I had was that in the LinkedIn um, thread that sort of developed, where a lot of people were commenting about this post mm -hmm. uh, on Dan Harris's LinkedIn, somebody said that this is more likely to be a path taken by SMEs rather than multinational companies uh, than moving to Mexico. Would you agree? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, it would depend on the kind of product. So if you, how to say, it, it's, okay, if you are buying off the shelf products in China, you know, uh, an example I often use is, you know, you buy toasters or coffee machines and you just slap your label on the product. And there's a lot of, um, lot of people doing that, right? That, 
there's a lot of business, a lot of trade is on standard off the shelf products yep. that are just relabeled, private labeled and, 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 and resold, distributed. Well, you know, most likely you are not a multinational company because multinational companies often develop their own products. Um, and is it easy for you to, to move to another country or let's just say to another supplier? Not really, right? Mm. Um, when you are a large company and you have a spend of, you know, $200 million on a certain product category, well, you, you, you're you going to call the, the, the Pegatron and the Foxconn and the, the Wheatstron and, and, and all of these guys, if... Um, if, if, let's say it's you know electric, electrical home appliances or electronic products in general, uh, and 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 you're gonna say, well, I'd like to have this made in this country and this country, and they're gonna say, well, you know, tell us more about your project. It's definitely doable. We already have you know uh, manufacturing facilities in Eastern Europe, in Mexico, in in here, in here, and here, right? In 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 Vietnam, maybe in India, and so on. So take your pick, right? Um, it's much easier. It's always much easier for large companies if they decide to do something to make a move, because they would also get the the key suppliers of custom components to follow with them. <laughs> I mean, if you have a, a huge spend, uh, yeah, the key suppliers will follow. It's just a, a matter of economics. You you know you you, you <laughs> and it does make sense also for these suppliers, uh, you know, on, on on a certain level. Um, so that's what always happens with the automotive plants when they move they um, you know the, the company that makes the seats and, and so on and so forth um, set up shop sometimes just across the street uh, that's very very common and if you look at you know cases with I don't know with Samsung um, Samsung moved over from uh, you know from Huizhou, I think they were in Huizhou, Dongguan, I forget, moved a lot of their activities in mobile phones to um, to the north of Vietnam. Well, people said, yeah, it's the north of Vietnam because it's very easy for them to get the components to, to, to come from China. So it's made in Vietnam, but the supply chain is still in China. Yeah, however, I, I, I'm pretty sure that there is a plan to get some of the key suppliers to move over time in the same area, close to them, uh, just because they don't like to have a lot of supply chain risk. Also, you know, if things are made, if the components are made in the same area, uh, it's, you know, they need less inventory, the lead times are lower, it's more responsive, they can control better. Mm. Um, it's, it's just so much better, right? So it's always, always easier for large companies. Uh, I, don't, I don't see why someone would say large companies would, would move, uh, it's, it's probably very specific to a certain industry that they were thinking of. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I, I suppose it, a large company that's well established in China, even though there are certain, you know, maybe political issues and, and everybody's been affected by COVID and the Chinese shut down in early 2020, for example, I, I suppose they, they've got less incentive to move in some ways as well, but just because they have everything they need to there and they've got the size and the ability to, to weather the problems more than smaller companies. Right. They might also be more challenged by some of their board members to think long-term of the risks, uh, um, challenged by their shareholders also. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just they have a more structured strategic planning process. It's just mm. part of who they are. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. And so uh, you you talked a lot about the infrastructure. And I guess that's probably one of the things which is missing from Mexico in some respects when we do compare it to China, mm -hmm. um, you know, with sub suppliers and and all the rest of it that, you, you know, you can't just plonk a factory there and then say, right, we've got everything because it's not just about the one location. And so that's what you've just mentioned about China. So, uh, you know, that ecosystem. So would this then make nearshoring, uh, as, as we might call it, to a place like Mexico more expensive than even having that, you know, very, very long supply chain in, in Asia? It can. It can. So <laughs> as you 
pointed out, it depends on where the supply chain is. If the network of the component suppliers and you know are, are spread out in different countries and are mostly in China, you know what what happens when you receive the cables and they are too short or yeah. you know that that's the the, <laughs> the the famous case about the Airbus A380 with the Germans that uh, the procured and manufactured certain parts and then it had to be assembled in, in the south of France and then they say well the cables are too short you know and then who's at fault you know but but how how, how much delay is this going to cause also right mm. and and uh, cost of runs and penalties from the, the airline and so on and that was a big deal and and that's exactly what happens when you have distributed manufacturing you know a long and complex supply chain wow you know, you're just piling risks on top of risks. That's why actually, um, if a lot of your supply chain is in China, you you better still manufacture, you know, everything in China, assemble, mm. test, inspect, and then at the same time, prepare maybe the hard work of finding another area of the world where the, um, you know, where your wool product can be made. And that might necessarily, Facilitate the redesign of the product with different components, different materials, um, you know, to 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 make it possible to mm. have manufacturing done somewhere else without anything coming from China. And in some product categories, that's a huge challenge. In others, it's much easier. In some of them, it's totally you know not applicable. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it, it really depends. But that that. You need to really map your supply chain and understand where the risks are and see how you can keep the, the, the total risk low. Because when we talk about risk, you know, every time you're going to have, you're going to receive some, some bad parts uh, in Mexico for assembly. Well, what's going to happen? You know, huge delays, expedited shipments from China. You can't even send it back to China. Probably you, you can't really get a full refund from the supplier. I mean, it's, it, it, it's going to create a lot of extra costs. Well, yeah, it's almost the same as receiving those parts, you know, in, in the US or, or uh, it would be the same situation, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, because you you might not actually notice that they're bad. Mm. And then you might make the full product with these, you know, parts, bad parts embedded and then deliver it to your customers. I mean, that's um, <laughs> that's a disaster. Right. Okay. So, I mean, the, the, this is where you're talking about assembly being done in Mexico, but components coming from China or elsewhere. In theory, there are some benefits, but the drawbacks are still huge if, if problems do occur. Correct. Correct. Yes. It's really, you need to take a, um, a risk, uh, risk management, management approach hmm. and um, not just look at an Excel spreadsheet with costs. That's what a lot of purchasers are, are, are doing. And if they don't have, I don't, I don't know, like a, a way to discount the, the, you know, the profit based on the risk, well, that then it's, um, you know, they, they're missing half the equation. Mm. If I bring the focus back to Mexico for a moment, so as a manufacturing location, what sort of benefits do you see that Mexico offers today? Well, I mean, um, uh, going back to what we mentioned, you know, look at the supply chain. So, mm. and the supply chain depends a lot on the kind of products that are already made in Mexico. There's a number of automotive plants, for example. So if you want relatively high quality um, parts in plastic, rubber, metal, glass, and so on, that can come from some of the, the manufacturing facilities that make the, 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 the parts that go into cars, Yeah, that should not be a high challenge, okay? Now you're gonna have to, to give them the, the, the volume that make it interesting because mm. if they make it for automotive, it's for hundreds of thousands of, 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 um, of vehicles minimum, right? So if, if, if it's very small, it might not be interesting to them. Right. Um, there's also quite a bit of electronics. However, a lot of these electronics um, 
contract manufacturing plants uh, such as uh, you know um, Foxconn in um, in Ciudad Juarez and and some others. A lot of what they purchase actually comes from from China. You know, so Foxconn uh, from Shenzhen or Zhengzhou or whatever mm-hmm. would send full containers of parts. So unfortunately, they 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 haven't done much to develop the supply chain locally, right? So again, in electronics, it's a bit of a challenge there. You might actually get a lot of parts from the U.S. Uh, because the, you know the U.S. is a huge manufacturing base. So a good a, one of the good sides of Mexico, it's, it's close to the U.S. market, but it's also close to the U.S. Um, to, to 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 source some parts, right? Mm. Um, so you need to do a study on, on on this because that's really fundamental. And and a lot of companies do this; they they go at it gradually. So the one of the people who commented on on um, on that LinkedIn uh, post is uh, Neil O'Connor, is um, professor of accounting. Yes, um, he's he's in Hong Kong these days, but he's um, affiliated with uh, Monash University in uh, in. Kuala Lumpur, I know him, and he um, he did a study just recently and still working on it uh, of all the public data, you know, of of companies that say publicly that they um, they were moving the location of manufacturing facilities, and he looked at you know a number of countries, and when you look at Mexico, um, it's not it's not like a Samsung out of China scenario where oh well. You know, it's not even a good market now. Costs are rising, political risks. Let's completely get out of the country. People who go to Mexico, usually when they already produce in China, they are going to produce a part of their needs in Mexico and keep their current facility in um, in China. Now that mm-hmm. is for the companies that have their own uh, manufacturing mostly. But uh, not 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 only not only. So if they, you know, if they have some manufacturing in China, they might move. You know, to, they might start to do ten percent, twenty percent, forty percent in Mexico for uh, shorter lead times, maybe more seasonal products where well, that's really important. Uh, maybe simpler products to to start. Maybe products that can be made with a lot of local content. You know, a lot of components from Mexico, and then they're going to keep what is really a good fit for China in China, and and maybe they only make um, what is going to be sold in the in 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 North America in Mexico. Maybe the rest of the world is still going to be served by China. So that's mm-hmm. what he has seen. He says that mm. um, out of twelve moves from China to Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, only one of them said that they had closed shop in China and moved everything to Mexico. 11 of them, uh, so more than 90%, um, kept their operations in China going, right? right. So um, it's, it's not like you're going to replace, but you're going to get some of the manufacturing closer to your key market. That's one of the key, um, key things to keep in mind here. Yeah, so you're talking about a China plus one strategy and the plus one being Mexico in this case. Correct. Yes. Yeah, okay. And and I guess because of um, some of the reading I was doing, there's, there's a couple of agreements that means that uh, Mexican products are tariff-free when going into the US, which of course mm-hmm. is a, a really great reason for having that special region just for y- the US market, if the US market's large for you. So you got the... Uh, US uh, Mexico Canada agreement and mm-hmm. the CPTPP. I'm not going to try and read the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so that's tariff free access for Mexican goods. And I mean, this is a big one, isn't it? Uh, yes. For companies that are hit by the, the tariffs that Trump put in place. Yes. Mm. Obviously, when, you know, if, if it's, I mean, there's just extra margin, right? Uh, plus, you don't have to pay for the expensive containers. Uh, I mean, except yeah. if you still need to 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 bring a lot of components from China, then you still need to 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 um, to pay for expensive freight. But maybe it's less volume, right? So mm. again, if you can source some local components, then you can really um, make a lot of savings. 
Yeah, it sounds like that's the uh, that's sort of the gold standard if you're trying to get a lot of your business into Mexico, right? That's yeah. Mm. Again, as I mentioned, you know, map your supply chain. Try to understand yeah. your your total risk. Um, do not just look at the extra margin you can you can make. Sure. Okay. I know we've mentioned some of the drawbacks of Mexico here and there. Let's formalize it and and look at them specifically now. Uh, sure. So from what I read, I mean, and I don't have any firsthand experience, but um, seems like labor laws are a little bit frightening, especially to American companies, because they, I mean, a company from um, you know from France or Italy would would say, well, okay, that's the rules here, fine, you know, maybe it's even worse in my country, mm-hmm. um, or and people who are used to operate a factory in in China also have to face a lot of these laws, but. Uh, in the U.S., um, labor is just not as protected, right? So it's a little bit surprising to um, to, to American managers sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, personal safety that was a huge issue, especially um, ten years ago. You know, in in, in Juarez and and places like that. Uh, people have told me they, they were held at gunpoint, uh, the, 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 you know, <laughs> and, and, and stored in the car and everything. So, um, and, and they considered that it was actually a good good outcome. <laughs> they were lucky. So that really turned a lot of people away. And, and of course, there's there's a lot of, you know, drug trafficking and, and, and things like that. Um, but Mexico is a huge country. You know, it, some places are, much, um, how to say, have much more of a problem with with the local mafia than than others. Mm. Um, so, I, I I would say that's of course that's a um, that's a concern. But when I see that people put manufacturing in, in in Pakistan, you know, including American companies. I'm thinking, well, 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 okay, and you fly there, and then and, and what happens, you know? Mm. Um, and some people were e- even looking into North Korea. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. you know, I, I'm, there were trips to North Korea, I, you know, and I think there's some um, there's some garment production there. Uh, but do you want to go there? You know, uh, probably not, right? Possibly not. Right. But do you think it's a case where we we watch all of these movies about, you know, uh, cocaine kingpins and and terrible you right, know cruelty right. and everything in Mexico and and there's the, that that sort of assumption that it's actually dangerous just it, in the same way as perhaps uh, especially if you're from the wrong country at the moment you know some of the Western countries perhaps with a a, a political relationship with China that's not so good. Mm-hmm. In the media, it's like, oh, it's not safe to go to China. But in actual fact, when you go, it's really benign. And and so, <laughs> but, you know, is, is that is there some truth in that for Mexico as well? Surely. Yeah, yeah that's pretty funny because when the Chinese look at their, their, their own TV, they say, whoa, America is so dangerous. This, <laughs> like all these, these, uh, these people going out with guns and killing, you know, 20 people. I mean, it's crazy. Even for the kids, it's crazy. Mm. You know, so... Um, if you look at everything through that lens, um, it's not going to be very informative. Sure. In, in the U.S. also, they, they see all these immigrants from places like Guatemala who say, well, you know, my whole neighborhood was completely uh, managed by the mafia and, and it was terrible and blah, 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 and, you know. And, and they form this picture in their mind, which is, you know, often true, but uh, that, that, you know, must be terrible down there. Uh, the thing is, Mexico is a large country, yeah, and it's diverse, and um, you know there's a lot of expats that are living there in some areas and are pretty happy. Mm. I mean, you know, are, are you still going to to go to Cancun, or are you going to say, well, Mexico in general, I heard that is very dangerous, so I'm not going to Cancun. Hey, thank you very much. You know, I'd be happy to go home. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, me it's too. A diverse country. It's a diverse country. Sure, sure. Okay. Great. Well, that's a lot of good information about Mexico and some of the reasons why you may or may not choose to go at the moment. In more general terms, let's say you're currently doing some manufacturing in China and you're looking to move some or all of it away. Do you have 
any tips on how to manage that process just to close out this episode? Well, um, you, well, you know, start with where is your market, your main market or main tools for your markets. And you might, to diversify, to, to reduce your risks, you might want to have manufacturing um, happen in different areas. Um, then in, you need to, to think in terms of areas of, let's say, areas of influence. Uh, because again, I would put China and Vietnam sort of together because who knows? Yes. Um, and I, I would nearly also put Taiwan in, in, into that because if something goes wrong, then things might get very um, rocky in Taiwan too. Mm. Uh, then you have all of the South China Sea, you know, so, you know, things like um, Vietnam and Malaysia, uh, that, that, you know, if there is a conflict there and the Philippines and, you know, it, they might get drawn into that. And which side are they going to take um, is anybody's guess. Uh, and then you have like the clearly non-Chinese um, sort of Asia. So India is not under... Chinese influence, for example. Yeah. So that's um, in terms of risk reduction, you need to see what is not related too tightly. So for example, some manufacturing in China, some in India um, does make sense from a risk reduction point of view. Some in China, some in Mexico, for the same reason, you know, makes a lot of sense in terms of risk reduction. And the advantage of Mexico is that if your main market is, in, is the US, it might be cheaper and lower risk, um, you know, and mm. faster time to market. However, and tighter control, you know, much more is much easier to 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 go there and so on. Um, however, you need to look at your full supply chain, including the components. Where do they come from? And if uh, a lot of them, a lot of the critical ones, especially, come from China, wow, you know, and especially if they're custom made, right? Because if they are standard off the shelf, um, you can buy from the, this supplier or that supplier, that's the best. If, this, mm. if, it, if it's also standard, but from only one supplier in China, yeah, well, you know, it's, there's a low likelihood that uh, there's quality issues, but still you, you have a, um, a single source kind of risk. Um, if if you can if you can avoid that is better and then anything custom comes with much higher risks in terms of product quality and unreliability so um, right try to have custom components made in the same country if possible or area you know as close as possible to final assembly basically right if that makes mm -hmm. sense uh, also something interesting about mexico is um also on, on the China Law blog, just uh, just this week, they published another article that explains something a little bit specific to Mexico is the shelter shelter companies. So there are companies that can um, sort of take care of a lot of the paperwork for you if you want to set up your own manufacturing facility. Oh yes, uh, I thought that was interesting because it's not it's not that common in. Um, like in, in China, I never heard of it. Now, of course, there are a lot of companies, including Walmart and others uh, in, in China that, that hire some of the staff <clears throat> through an, an employment agency. And that can be quite, um, qu quite convenient. And what I mean by employment agency in this, in this case is that Walmart or, or whatever, uh, manufacturer XYZ <clears throat> has a contract with an agent and the agent on paper, the agent is the one that employs the staff, right? So mm. if you need to adjust the workforce up and down, it's, uh, it's, it comes with lower risks, right? It's more flexible. There's a little bit of extra cost, obviously, um, but, but it, it can work pretty well for the long term also in China, by the way. Um, and in Mexico, there are companies that do this, but also... Um, you know, help you rent, a, like find a site and rent a place and 
and and even do some of the supply chain work from what I read. Um, you know, help you find some some component suppliers and so on. So it's a let's say you 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 want to move manufacturing, you want to manage really the manufacturing yourself, buy the components and everything. Uh, this would make it easier for you because you would focus on. Um, on, on specifying what components need to be purchased, mm. um, of course, qualifying the new suppliers, if any, and really focusing on, you know, what layout do we need? What processes do we need? How to keep it under control? What are the key competencies we need? Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Uh, specify all that, have a few engineers on site, uh, but you can, you could get a relatively, um, how to say, relatively simple manufacturing layout, you know, to, 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 to get to work relatively fast from what I read. Right. So that, that yeah. is, um, that is actually making things much easier. Yes. That's a, that's a helpful blog post. I will add the link to that into the show notes because mm -hmm. yeah, uh, understanding the shelter business model, um, that's going to be handy. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. So there you have it. Mexico, definitely a credible alternative in some cases. Correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Study your situation and it it can have um it can have its place, yes. Great. Well, thanks for joining us, Renaud. That's uh, that's been fascinating. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks for joining us. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, don't forget to like and share. And you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other places that you get your podcasts from. See you next time.